Hi everyone, I don't really know how to start this episode today. If you're brand new to the channel, my name is Danny Walker. I was Miss Montana USA 2018. Yesterday I heard the news about Chesley Christ's suicide and I spent all day crying and talking with friends and I haven't been able to... I'm gonna try to get through this. I can get through this. I have not been able to put into words what I would like to on social media and I still don't feel like I have something in this moment incredibly eloquent to say about what has happened because of the shock that I have felt and so I organized some of my thoughts here and I'm going to try to stick to my main points because there are some things that I would really like to address about all of this. My heart is pounding. There, there are some things that I really want to say and first of all I want to say that if this has affected you, know that you are not alone in this grieving process, that there are so many other people out there that are feeling what you're feeling and you are in my prayers and I know in the prayers of, of so many as we're mourning this collective loss of Chesley Christ. I also want to say that this is something that is very traumatic and affects so many. Please don't hesitate to talk to someone about this. Please don't hold in what you're feeling about this. Please share with friends, with family, with mental health professionals about what you're feeling. Please do not put this and hold on to this in your heart. So many of us are confused. And so I wanna say, don't torture yourself about this. Wondering, especially if you're close with Chesley and seeing this, wondering what could I have done? I was talking to my sister queens from my Miss USA class and many other people. I have talked to a lot of people yesterday. Got a lot of messages. And thank you so much for all of your messages that you guys have sent me on social media reaching out. I really appreciate that. I was talking to my sister queens, some of which have a lot of experience in mental health issues, whether they've experienced that personally or worked in that field. And one of them was saying that when somebody makes this decision to do this, there's nothing that's gonna stop them. And when I think about Chesley and what a strong woman we all see her as, she's that person that when she's gonna do something and she decides that, that she's gonna see that through. And in this case, that was the worst, in the worst way possible. Um, the next thing I wanna say is, there's a lot of questions that we have and I really don't know or don't, think because they did talk about how she left a note and she said that she left everything to her mom but that it didn't explain why she did this and I don't want that to drive you crazy either I just want you to know what what we do know and, and that is that Chesley was in pain we didn't see that because it wasn't the type of pain the pain that we associate with with our physical body, it's not like I broke an arm or I cut myself and you can you can see that and I'll know and I'll relate to that. We can't all relate to the type of pain that Chesley was experiencing. And I hope that people don't. My, I hope that you will never experience that pain. But I think it's just something that instead of continuing to question and ruminate, to instead just accept that she was in pain and at the end of the day, we're never gonna know exactly what was what was causing that all these little thoughts that were going through her head but just know that she was in pain and this is something that she felt was going to alleviate that the next thing i want to say that really made me think yesterday was our urgency when we see someone screaming from a burning house or a car accident we rush to their aid collectively we help the people around us to save their life and for some reason we don't feel that sense of urgency with mental health mental illness doesn't kill you in a day it's a slow death for someone before they decide to take that that last step and we all wonder well what could what could i have done i wish she would have told someone i wish she would have talked to someone I did see some reports saying that Chesley shared in interviews before that she speaks to a counselor. She was talking to someone. I don't know from the people around her what she was sharing with them, but I will say that 
I have multiple text messages from my friends that are screenshotting some of their last conversations with Chesley. And from what I've seen, there's no way that I would have ever thought or known that this was coming if I had been a part of those interactions. Till the end, Chesley was serving people and thinking of other people. And that's what I could see in these messages. And that's something that we should think of as a positive, like remember that. Sharing resources for mental health and suicide prevention I think is important, talking about it. And I will put resources in the description of this video. But it really, this really made me think, one of the things that we all could do, aside from just sharing, is being proactive about checking in. And I think that's where a shift needs to be made. Now I will say that many of us don't have the skill set that we need to help a friend going through some very heavy issues. There are things that are going to be beyond your realm of knowledge. And when, when you get there, then we address that. And then you can defer to people who can help a friend. But there's a lot of people who aren't even at the step where they're sharing with a friend who can help them get a resource. And so we're out there putting these, just sharing a resource, and there's a lot of people struggling with their mental health, and they won't even take that first step. They won't even contact that resource. So what we need are advocates. That's what I've really learned. It's not that there's not enough resources in the world. It's that there aren't enough people that care. And I had this conversation very recently with my mom. My mom told me about a woman that she saw in her neighborhood, an elderly woman who was homeless. And my mom, who doesn't have much, started bringing whatever she could to this woman whenever she saw her. And she would do things like bring her a warm cup of coffee to keep her warm, ask her if she's hungry and feed her. And then my mom shared this with me. And at the time I wasn't, I wasn't in the same state um, and wasn't, wasn't in, in physical proximity to actually reach out and help this woman myself. So I kept encouraging my mom and I said, mom, we need to help and, and we need to find a way to help. And I, and I kept asking my mom about this woman constantly. And then my mom told me one day, well, she's very cold. She's cold. And I said, done, no problem. Let me go buy this woman a coat. Um, so we went and we bought her a coat. We gave her the coat. We find out weeks later that somebody robbed this woman. We found, we, cause we couldn't find her. Um, we found out that she ended up being in the hospital. So she got released and my mom found her again and reconnected with her and at, talked to her and sat with her and asked her about her story and how she got here. And, and this woman shared this, this story about her life and, and these generations of her family who had experienced homelessness and, and, and the foster care system and, and just generations of people who we see and we say that they slip through the cracks. And it's not that, like I said, we don't have enough resources. We just don't have enough people that care. And so I was like really persistent and I really would ask my mom because I wasn't, I couldn't physically help this woman. And I would always check in with my mom and, and say, what are we doing for her? And my mom found out that this woman, you know, had a daughter who was not in great circumstances either, who was barely being able to help herself. So let alone she couldn't even help her mother. And so my mom really reached out and was persistent with that and started to connect them with resources and to advocate for them. And I think that, guys, is the key. That is what I have seen. And so now, great news, this woman and her daughter, they, they got housing. They have a roof over their head now. They have different services that are able to help them. You don't have to help a million people, guys. Helping one, though. Helping one. And I, I really, really realized this because my grandfather is a veteran and we get a lot of help from the VA for him. And my family said recently, gosh, the VA helps so much. Why do people say that veterans can't get help? And I'm like, it's not that they can't get help. It's not that they don't want to get help. It's that sometimes you're in a place where you can't even ask for help. And that's why the advocates, the people that care are so important because that person is going to be there in your place. They're going to be that strength for you to say, 
hey, my friend is suffering, they need help, what can we do? They're gonna be the one that's gonna be persistent, guys. And that's why it's so important that I encourage you to be an advocate for those who need help. There are resources, there are answers to problems. I just need you to care about one other person. Just care about your neighbor. That's it. So that is something that to me is so important and that's why it's so important to check on your friends because sometimes they're not going to have the strength to ask for help themselves. And you as a friend can help them by recognizing that and being the connector and holding their hand and you know taking them somewhere if you need to to allow them to get the help that they really need from a professional. Because like I said, sometimes we don't have that skill set. Um, but you can care. That's what we can do. Now the next thing I want to say is that it's something I, I really am a big believer in and I heard it put into words not that long ago, but it was just that the things that we say at funerals should be the things said at birthdays. And it reminded me of a story I heard and there was once this woman who had a cupboard of good china and she saved this china for a special day. And before that special day passed, she died. And the special day never came. All that to say that every day is a special day. Every day might be your last. Every day could be that opportunity to tell somebody you love them, to encourage them, to celebrate life. Every single day, friends, don't wait. Don't save the good china. I know that we're coming to greater awareness about the importance of mental health and wellness and we know we can say these are important issues and they are these silent killers, they are these, there are these battles that people are fighting behind closed doors and, in, and with inside of themselves and as we look back, I, I scrolled through Tresley's feed, in recent posts there was no negativity, there was no sadness expressed. And when people have been posting about her, they've been posting this happy Chesley all the time, this, this light as everyone is describing her as, but just know that even when you see those people, that those people that are at their hap happiest, that they have those difficult times. Please don't make the assumption that they don't, and please don't use that as an excuse to minimize the effect of the way that you treat others. I many of you asked but I didn't get to meet Chesley personally it's really crazy though because I was in the audience I witnessed Chesley win Miss USA and it's really weird because I always thought that I would meet Chesley we have so many mutual friends and because we have so many mutual friends and because everybody knows Chesley I regularly hear about Chesley I, I we I can't even tell you guys, recently in the past couple weeks connecting with my USA sisters, people are like, oh yeah, Chesley this, Chesley that. I was in an event recently and, and this woman that has been a part of Chesley's life since prior to winning Miss North Carolina USA, she was sharing with me things and, and saying that, because we were talking about Chesley's success and she was saying that people were just so mean to Chesley and it was so hard and she received so much hate from people and that kind of surprised me because I work with a lot of young women who admire Chesley and when I think of title holders recently who've kind of gone through a lot, one of the first that comes to mind for me is Deshauna Barber and what she experienced. It's not Chesley that comes to mind because Chesley's reign was so historic and had so much, I know that there's bad, but she had, I felt like this extra amount of good press and opportunity. And I will say that the things that came her way, I don't think were by chance. It was because of Chesley's work ethic. The, if you guys, that would be a whole other thing to just talk about what she did to prepare for Miss USA. It was just, you know, waking up every day. She was working out at 6 a.m., would go to work at the office, would do appearances. She did, She went on something like 80 appearances before Miss USA. She was prepared. Chesley was a star. Like Chesley was confident. Chesley was unique in that way. As I shared, I'm, I'm in group messages and I've been hearing a lot about Chesley and I wanna share with you something uh, that Chesley actually said. As many of you know, there's a lot of pageant fan places and you know that my channel is truly a community for pageant fans and contestants. And there is a Facebook group called the USB Facebook group. And they post these, I, I'm, I don't follow any of these pages um, on purpose. 
I didn't I never got into these pages and fan pages as a contestant because I knew and a lot of people reached out to me to say don't look at them because there's a lot of mean things that could be said about you and I said well I don't need that so I'm not gonna look at these things but a lot of title holders do and somebody posted when the former is giving us more face than the current Asia Andrea and Chesley at a dinner party in New York this week one woman posted but she's not referring to Chesley then she commented they all look fabulous and I'm not really sure why she kind of stepped back on that maybe I, I really don't know but Chesley responded to this woman and she said while I agree that all three of us are serving in this photo why don't you take a bit break from Chesley hate for a while we get it you don't like me and you've been spewing vitriol and hate in my general direction from the moment I won I like seeing the pageant updates in this group, especially when I don't see them on other social media platforms. And I get that not everyone's opinion of me is always going to be positive, but a simple search in this group of uh, quote unquote Chesley and together shows the amount of negativity you've near constantly shared about me. A woman you've never had a conversation with or personally met. I implore you to do some soul searching about why that is and hop off the Chesley hate train for the time being. I'm tired of it and I hope that after two long years, you are too. I have felt really fortunate with my channel because I don't feel like I've gotten an outpouring of hate from people, but I still will occasionally and maybe weekly because I can't read every comment. I can't see every comment at this point where people want to, first of all, be mean for no reason. Second of all, they like to belittle my opinion, my accomplishments because I didn't place it Miss USA. The way that I view people who say those things to me on my channel and try to minimize what I've done after Miss USA or the fact that I reached the Miss USA stage is I look at it as, you know, recently I got a, recently I got a comment, Miss Unplaced, who are you? Who am I to what? Who am I to dream for more than my life? Who am I to keep going? What kind of question is that? And so when I see these comments, so at the end of the day, I really like to remind myself that somebody who has time to leave these comments doesn't have that much going on in their life. Doesn't have that much going on that's good happening in their life. Because we all go through our things and I do feel very blessed and I recognize that. And I don't have the time in the day to leave a comment like that on a stranger's page. And the other thing I like to remember and remind myself of is that who am I? Who are, who are you? Who is this stranger leaving a comment on a platform in this community that I have created and built from zero? And this person, they're criticizing me for not placing it, Miss USA. They never even got to Miss USA. And the women who have gotten to Miss USA, they don't even say stuff like that because there's a mutual respect and understanding for this unique and shared experience that we have had and they know how difficult it is. So somebody who's been there, they get it. And these people, whoever's writing stuff behind their keyboards, y'all aren't ever gonna get it until you get out there yourself and you go for that big scary dream. You have to, or you're not gonna get it. And this really, this really reminds me of a common question we hear that gets asked at pageants to title holders, especially at big national pageants or international pageants. And they ask you, how would you deal with online hate or bullying and what would be your advice? I'm sorry, I shouldn't have to deal with that. This shouldn't even be a question. The question is not, how am I gonna deal? How am I gonna cope? How am I gonna respond? The question is, what are we gonna do to stop these things from even happening? And how are we gonna get people to take the accountability for the words that they're saying online anonymously? The issue isn't ever me or anybody else going after a dream that happens to be in the public spotlight the issue are the people trying to tear others down and saying cruel things to people who just have a dream. That's the issue. The issue is you. The issue is not me or anyone else that has a big dream. And that is something that I think needs to be addressed. Now, and for me in the pageant industry, I, I see a lot of the positive. That's what I like to put out there. And as many of us know, there is a lot of negative that's been going on and there are a lot of these people that bash and 
and hate on others. And you know, you could say whether it's a title holder, whether it's a celebrity that I hate when people say this, that you in some way deserved it because you're putting yourself out there. You asked for it, but think of it this way. Let's, you know, not every job is in the public arena. And there are a lot of jobs that are very highly sought after that, that maybe you're, you're going after. And if you got this job, this promotion, people in your community, they're going to look to you and they're going to be like, wow, that's amazing. Your friends, your family, they're going to be impressed. But you just happen to be going after a position that's not in the public spotlight. So imagine that you go, you work your butt off, and you get that job, that position, and then suddenly people are coming after you at work. They are inserting themselves into your private life. They are saying things about you online that has nothing really even to do with, with your work ability, but these are personal attacks on you know your, your, your personality, your physical appearance. Imagine that people came after you with that type of vengeance and the reasoning behind it is, well, you asked for it. You went for your dreams. You got that promotion. That's insanity. So there should be no difference between somebody in the public eye versus that's going for their dreams that is achieving those dreams and somebody that is out of the public eye and going after their dreams. I know that a lot of people on my channel have commented that I'm too politically correct. And it's not about being politically correct for me. It's that knowing that the content that I release online could be seen by the contestant that I'm talking about. And I like to imagine that it is seen by the contestant that I'm talking about. And I like to approach it from the position that I approach my coaching clients. I want to share information with them that maybe sometimes is hard to take. Okay, it's, it's hard to take because we put so much heart into our efforts for pageantry. But at the same time, I don't want to present it in a way that's mean or a personal attack ever on a person, on a title holder or a contestant, because the reasoning behind these things and the stuff that I share with you guys, the insights of this world, um, is because I just want the best opportunities for these young women. And so a lot of people, like I said, criticize me for being too politically correct and or being too nice. It's not possible to be too nice. We need more of it. We need a lot more of it. So that's if that's what y'all want to see on a channel, if you guys want to see somebody just like roasting a contestant, it's not here. Like this is not going to be the, the place for you for that. And that's why I even try to say in the episodes, please be considerate of what you're going to comment because contestants look at this stuff and it affects us. Now we know, like I said, okay, toxicity is a problem. I am really hoping right now, I like to try to look for the good and I really need that right now. Chesley has an incredible legacy. And what I'm thinking is what is this new legacy going to be because I'm hopeful that it's gonna outshine what, what has happened. And what, what my kind of thoughts are on this is that Chesley's death is going to be shining this light on the toxicity within not only the pageant industry, but within any industry where we are criticizing public figures or celebrities. And I don't think this is gonna be something that we are gonna be forgetting anytime soon. I think it's gonna be something that we're gonna hear contestants talk about for years to come. They're gonna remember this moment because Chesley maybe was their first Miss USA, their first role model. So uh, what I'm hoping is that our keyboard warriors out there are going to take pause before they say something hurtful to a stranger like Chesley, a courageous stranger, no less, a person who just went out there and was willing to be vulnerable. And guys, I see this behind the scenes, and that's one of the most beautiful things that I get to be a part of as a pageant coach. I get to work with young women that have never done a pageant, that have done years of pageants, and I get to hear about their fears, their insecurities, and we get to face those head on together, and we get to address those, and we get to work on them, and we get to help, uh, help young women push past these things and go out and get whatever it is that their heart desires, and to be braver and more courageous and more confident and all these things that we that many people aspire to be, the reasons that people look up to title holders for. And these are all beautiful things and it's something that, that I um, have been privileged to witness, which is why I get sad when people judge contestants so harshly. Because you judge her for what you see on the stage, but you don't even know what that journey was like and what it took for that young woman to get there. 
and maybe she's not as great as every other girl walking on the stage. Maybe her speaking abilities aren't there. Maybe her walking abilities aren't there, whatever, whatever it is. But where she is today and what you're seeing today on that stage is better than where she was when she started. So that's a win for that young woman. And for anybody to bash that, I just wanna close with a few things and reminders about Chesley. And I'm gonna put up on the screen this really beautiful uh, comment that Sarah Rose, my friend, created for Chesley to really reflect back on all the incredible things that Chesley did so we can remember her for that. And that's what I want you know, us to be thinking about. Sarah really did a good job of kind of encapsulating everything about Chesley. And so um, I'm gonna put this on the screen and just close with that because I think we need to remember every amazing thing that Chesley did right now and then still remember that people are going through a lot that you don't know so please choose your words wisely and actually I will I'll kind of close by just saying this I did post this on Instagram I did share this some of you asked me about it I did an Instagram story when I found found out the news and I talked about this quote I had found when my cousin Andrew passed I was 26 and he was 26 and his life was taken by a drunk driver. Some of you guys know this because I shared about this during my time as Miss Montana USA and I worked with Donate Life. They worked with our family a lot. They helped us through the organ donation process. Here's what I wanna leave everybody with before I cue this. It's, it's this quote that lives with me every day. And I think about this probably at least once a week or basically it embodies the way that I try to treat people and especially strangers, especially especially when I just know that this will probably be my only interaction with a person. And I'm like, what can I leave them with? What's, I don't know them. I don't know what's going on in their life today, but how can I make their day better? How can I make them smile? Because maybe that's what they just needed today. Maybe they didn't get that today at home. Maybe they felt discouraged at home. And I know I'm just a stranger, but I can, even as a stranger, help somebody recognize something beautiful about themselves. I have that ability and you have that ability. So I just wanna share this quote. I shall pass this way but once. Any good that I can do or any kindness I can show to any human being, let me do it now. Let me not defer nor neglect it, for I shall not pass this way again. Etienne de Grelet. Thank you for watching this episode. God bless you all. My prayers are with you as we grieve for Chesley together.